so good morning in my previous class i had discussed the simplest reaction that is reversible first order reaction today i will discuss another of course simple reaction but that is not first order that is second order reactions and uh, if you understand this my first lecture the reversible first order reaction you can very easily solve this second order reactions and after doing this second order reaction we will derive another equation because now are you, you are in higher classes so you should not worried about the zero order or first order or second order or the third order but it is better to determine the nth order of the reactions so let me start so if i write again it is also very simple a plus b is converted into product i have already discussed with you that partial molar free energy is responsible for the driving force of any type of or partial molar free energy is responsible for the chemical reactions and there is a system that suppose this is stoichiometric number and of course it is conversion that is a is converted into product as well as b is also converted into product so there is a thumb rule that whatever the change of number of moles suppose i can write like delta n a or delta n b is directly proportional to the stoichiometry like that and similarly change in number of moles of a is also so it is a thumb rule first point but you know that it is better to use the molar concentration so generally what we do we write like that change in molar concentration of b and whatever change in molar concentration of a this is a simple thing very school level chemistry this is first point now second point is that yes there must be one rate constant so we can write either you can determine you can write also d by it is up to you d by dt of b you can also calculate minus d by dt of a d by dt of a but generally we do because simultaneously it is very difficult to determine the change of concentration of a and b simultaneously so generally we determine change of concentration of one reactant suppose you are working the saponification of the ethyl acetate that is a second order reaction saponification of ethyl acetate in the sodium hydroxide is one of the reactants and ethyl acetate is one of the yeah second in your practical classes you will perform in next week we will give to potassium persulfate and ki reaction potassium persulfate and ki reaction so suppose this is reaction reactant 1 potassium persulfate and number 2 is the potassium iodide is the reactant number 2 in first case generally we 
can study with the help of conductometric titration and in this case we can use the iodometric type of the titration. But you have to determine at least concentration of the one reactant, not simultaneously potassium persulfate as well as the Ki. So it is better to use suppose first of the reactants. So I can write like that very simple minus change in it is a differential form you all know A is equal to rate constant. I am not saying it is 2 or 1 or like that K. Depends upon the concentration of A and concentration of B. In first case, you have seen that there is a reversible first order reaction. So, we were worried about the product also because there is equilibrium. But here, the difference between that first case and the second case, here there are two or I must say three variables. These also, these also, time is also. So, it is a, again, again, again a very simple system that we have to eliminate A or transformation of B, uh, we have to eliminate B, sorry, we have to eliminate B or transformation of B, transformation of B. Now, how? That means we can write like that delta of B, whatever the change in concentration, delta of A. So, it is very simple, you know, it is equal to B minus B0. Now, bear in mind that any type of chemical kinetics equation, rate law or integrated rate law can be solved by many methods, but I am using the simplest method. So, you are free to use any method to get the final results. So, there is no hard and fast rules that you have to follow this equation, but because there is a large number of students coming from various places, so I am using the simplest method. Okay. So, it is equal to the change in concentration of A is all our assumption. When you perform the experiment, then you will understand is how sodium uh, ethyl acetate is converted into sodium acetate and whatever the alcohol and other things. So, how do you calculate the concentration of the sodium acetate? Suppose you are using a conductometer, conductometer but you have already determined the equivalent conductance and the specific conductance. So, first you measure the observed conductance of ethyl acetate and after the conversion you will get sodium acetate. So, what you can do? You can take separate sodium acetate, separate, prepare a solution and measure its observed conductance. And after performing the experiment, you can again measure the concentration of the observed conductance of. So, you can see the, the change, the transformation like that. So, this is A, same thing, minus A. Very simple. So, I have to eliminate this B. My first objective is that I have to eliminate this A because it is very difficult to integrate three variables A, B and T. So, better I transform into this thing. And then you all know that the rearranging the variables, rearranging the variables. So, I can like that if I, I need B, I need B. So, B0 minus A0 plus A. You follow my point? So, B is side. So, B0 minus A. So, my problem is solved that, that B is replaced. So, I can write like that. K of A 
and the value of b here like that b0 minus a0 plus a now it is little bit difficult as comparison to your reversible first order reaction so now because these are all concentration terms now you just rearrange these things that means i can use rearrange d by d so our this part is a b0 minus a0 plus a is equal to is equal to k d t and just rearranging these things that is my differential equations uh, one differential form now problem starts that yes we have rearranged it but there are large number of things so now the need of very simple mathematics and i have given you a table of integrals sometimes what happen we have to solve it with the help of that table of integrals from table this is called some the results of some particular integration you need not to be solve complete integration like that so you just see the table of the integrals and uh, that means i have to integrate it from 1 to 2 from 1 to 3 that is the part how i do this integration so let us do some simple solution that suppose this a is equal to x and b0 minus a0 is equal to small p and you can change the from this minus side is done to solve it so no no pose so if i write like that so it will be dx 1 x p plus x is equal to minus now this if you see this integral result separately where p is not equal to 0 from the table of the integration the result of this this not this one, the results of this integration is minus 1 by p natural log p plus x divided by x i am not solving the integration what i do i have given a, a a paper to you where there is a some results of the integration so from the that table i have seen that the integration of 1 by x dx is equal to 1 divided by p minus natural log p plus x divided by x so this big equation our equation is this and it is very simple dx from 1 to 2 x x2 minus x1 it is temperature t2 minus t1 like that so so i can write minus 1 p means b0 minus a0 
नेचुरल लॉ p प्लस एक्स दैट मीन्स बी जीरो माइनस ए जीरो प्लस एक्स डिवाइडेड बाई एक्स इन ए वन टू टू इज इक्वल टू माइनस के टी टू माइनस टी वन वेरी सिंपल and this minus this minus then i think this is equal to nothing but b isn't it p plus x is equal to b it is b so you will get finally 1 divided by after this thing i will give some numerical problem so that you can understand b divided by a is equal to of course i mean this 1 to 2 also there yes t2 minus t1 definite integral and like your first system if we assume that the T is equal to zero. That means always I take the starting point, starting point, initial and the final. So finally we will get one b zero minus a zero natural log because b oblique b zero. Initial into final, a oblique a zero is equal to k t. Why well, suppose suppose you second order, no minus sign. So if you want to determine the rate constant, so just y is equal to m x plus c. That means we have to plot a graph between this left hand side and t. So you get straight line or whatever it is. By that method, you can determine the you can determine the rate constant. But the problem of second order reaction is that if you are doing simple experiment, again I am telling this very old reaction, the saponification of the ethyl acetate. Suppose your concentration of ethyl acetate is 0.01 molar and sodium hydroxide is 0.01 molar so there will be no problem if this there is equal concentration but this is not like that sometimes but suppose by mistake or by your sodium hydroxide concentration is not exactly equal to ethyl acetate then of course you have to change this formula slightly because that time the b minus b0 and a minus a0 will be different and there will be different equation will be there so that is the difference between the first order and second order reaction but generally what happen because you are in higher classes so it is very difficult for you to learn all the zero first second and third even fraction order is also there sometimes order is negative in next classes i will also discuss about the negative order so but it is also one of the simplest example of second order reactions using this simple how you determine the k so in my next section i will discuss the nth order of the reactions thank you